salvation Can you hear the Lord's voice? Today is the day of salvation Can you hear the Lord's voice? Today is the day of salvation Can you hear the Lord's voice? Today is the day of salvation With God's knowledge and God's understanding for you to repent of all of your sins, we give you God's testimony and God's feeling of sin and of righteousness and of judgment so that you might make an intelligent decision on where you're going to spend your eternity. Many of you, you plan for the day. You plan for the year. You plan everything except where you're planning to spend your eternity. You plan your vacations. You plan your retirement. You plan your son, where he's going to go to school, where he's going to go to college. You're forever planning out something that won't give you life, but yet you don't make plans on where you're going to spend your eternal life. We're telling you, many brethren, Jesus is commanding you in these last days to repent of your sins, to turn from all of your wickedness, and that you might seek Christ while he is found, that you might call upon him while he is near. Jesus is indeed the son of the living God who suffered an agonizing death on the cross on Mount Calvary so that you might come to believe on his name, so that you might come and confess all your sins. Jesus is commanding you, men and brethren, to turn from your sins today, from your fornication, having sex with men and women that's not your husband or wife. Turn from your adultery. A lot of you have been married and you put away that man. You put away that woman because you found somebody you thought was better and you married again. That's called adultery, men and brethren. God is against adultery. The Word of God tells us that no adulterer shall inherit God's kingdom. A lot of you, you're afraid to speak against this abomination called homosexuality and lesbianism. Now they're trying to take the kingdom by force. They're trying to have same-sex marriage. And all this wickedness is going on in the world today but a lot of you so-called preachers and so-called Christians you're afraid to come against these evil works that men are doing in the earth in these last days but I'm telling you many brethren Christ is not afraid to come against your sins the true people of God we're not afraid to come against your wickedness God wants you to repent and come and believe on his name. God wants you to turn from all your wickedness and come and believe on the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, many brethren, you got to turn from all this false religion that tells you you can't be perfect. Turn from all this false religion that tells you you can be a sinner saved by grace. Turn from all this false religion that tell you there's none righteous. No, not one. I'm telling you the Catholic faith, the Baptist faith, the Jehovah Witness faith, 
That is not the faith of Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, men and brethren, the God that I preach unto you is not the Catholic God. The God we declare unto you is not the God of the Methodist. It is not the God of the Muslim. The God that we declare unto you, He is the Almighty God. His name is Jesus Christ, and He can turn and keep you from all your sins. Jesus, the God we declare unto you, He is the Almighty God. He knows how to keep His Son. He knows how to keep His daughter from committing sin against Him. Jesus, He's the Almighty God. He gives us power in our flesh by God's grace, by God's Holy Spirit. Jesus gives us power to live a life free from all sin. And I'm telling you, men and brethren, if you want to experience this power, this power of having life and love in your hearts for your neighbor, this power of having life and true peace in your hearts, knowing that you have power to love your wife. You got power to love and raise up your children in righteousness. You got power to love your husband and obey him. By God's spirit, by the love of Christ, you got power in Jesus' name. If you want to experience this life, men and brethren, if you want to experience this power, power over sin, power over cursing, power over evil thoughts, and filthy communication. A lot of times you look at men and women, they call themselves Christians, but every other word is a curse word. Men and women, they call themselves Christians, but they got a boyfriend or they got a girlfriend. Men and women calling themselves Christians, but yet have not been set free from their sins. We're telling you brothers and sisters, we're telling you men and brethren, if you really want to experience the power of God, the power that we have experienced, then you got to come and hear these words. The word of God tells me, you can't even believe in Jesus except the true man of God declare himself unto you. And I'm telling you, many brethren, Jesus is not declaring himself in a Baptist church. Jesus, the Almighty God, he's not declaring himself in a Jehovah Witness church. You can't receive Jesus Christ, the Almighty, by listening to the Catholics, by listening to the Methodists. You cannot receive Jesus, the Almighty God, by listening to false religion. You got to turn from all this false religion, from all these false prophets, people who said they've been sent by God, but yet they don't know God because they're still in their sins. I'm telling you, men and brethren, you judge. If your pastor is still in sin, how can he tell you to repent? If your pastor been divorced and married again, that's adultery. Then how can he get up and preach against adultery? If your pastor, he got a abominable relations with another man. Your pastor, he has an abominable relations with the women that's in his congregation. Your pastor, being a lover of money, all he can preach is tithes, all he can preach is offerings. Every service, he just looking for that collection plate. I'm telling you, men and brethren, that's the proof that he don't know God. And if he don't know God, and he's your leader, if he don't know God, and he's your pastor, how much more the congregation? I'm telling you, many brethren, you need to learn how to escape from all these money-loving false prophets who only want your wife, who only want your daughter. You need to learn how to escape from all this false religion. If you tone your ear to hear the truth, if you humble your heart to hear God's word, if you have enough faith in these last days to hear what thus saith the Lord. I'm telling you, many brethren, the word of God tells us in 1 John chapter 3, verse 8, he that commit a sin is of the devil. Why? Because the devil, he sinned from the beginning. And this is the purpose. This is the reason 
why Christ suffered that agonizing death so that he might set us free from the works of the devil. Have you been set free, men and brethren? Think about it. Have you been truly set free from all of your sins? Or are you still bound by sin? Does sin still have a grip on you? Does sin still have its channel locked on your tongue? You try to do right, but every time you open up that mouth, it comes cursing. It comes swearing. Does sin still have a lock on your thoughts? You know it's not right, but every time you look at that woman that's not your wife, here comes the lust. We're telling you, men and brethren, that's because of false religion. You have not received the truth that it should make you free from all of your sins. That's why you can still go to a Baptist church for 10, 20, and 30 years and still be in your sin. You have not received the truth that's able to set you free from your sins. That's why you can be a deacon in a Methodist church and still be a lover of money and still have eyes full of adultery because what they're preaching does not give you power to set you free from your sins. Hello? And I'm telling you, men and brethren, Jesus said in St. John chapter 8, verse 32, that you shall know the truth, Amen. and only the truth can set you free from all of your sins. If you have a desire to be set free of your sins, then you need to pay attention to what these brethren is going to be preaching today. If you really have a desire to know God and to know God's will, hearken to the words that you're going to hear from these true brethren. We're church of the living God, which is a pillar and ground of the truth. We're located here in Tampa, in your neighborhood, and we come out today to preach unto you God's truth, God's word, and God's plan for your salvation. So hearken, men and brethren, Open up your eyes, your ears, and your understanding to what these true members of God's body is going to be preaching. Have some faith today. Have some faith to know that God is against your sins. Have some faith to understand that there is a different way. The way that you've been on hasn't saved you up to this point. So you need to have some faith, men and brethren, to know God's way. Your way can't save you. Come and learn God's way, God's plan of salvation in these last days. Have some faith. Don't blaspheme in your hearts. Don't gang say. Have some faith today to hear what thus saith the Lord from true men of God. And if you can believe this truth, and Jesus promised it could indeed set you free from all of your sins. What we're telling you, men and brethren, there is no such thing as a sinner saved by grace. So have some faith that you might hear words that can set you free from all of your sins. Have some faith, brethren. Have some faith, sisters. Have some faith today to hear God's word from these preachers. In Jesus' name, amen. We thank the Lord for the opportunity to be here today, men and brethren, to preach unto you words of life and edification, words that you're not going to hear every day in these churches. Because the scripture, Matthew chapter 24, tells us many false prophets are going out into the world today and they're deceiving many. And we see that many are deceived in these last days. They see church as a business, as a money-making enterprise, in order to find some gain. They see church as a way to find women, or a way to find men. They see church as a social club, or something suited, anything that can suit their flesh in these last days. Men and brethren, but we are here to tell you that a church a true church of God is supposed to live holy. A true church of God is supposed to live righteous. A true church of God is supposed to live godly in this present world. 
as we heard one minister before me saying, a church is a body of Jesus Christ. It's the Lord's people gathered together, worship and praise His name. But they get together in church and they say they know God with their mouth. But they were in the club on Saturday and they were in all kind of fornication and adultery the day before. Men and brethren, don't be deceived in these last days. Because many in that last day, they're going to say, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have done many wonderful works. Many are going to say, Lord, I slept on the floor for the poor. I gave my tithes. I gave my 10%. I gave my life to feed the poor, those that were hungry. But the Lord is going to be looking at that heart, men and brethren. He's going to judge you by what you've done in your body. And if you've been committing sin, men and brethren, the Lord, he cannot receive you. The Lord is angry with the wicked all the day long. Amen. If you're still coming up with this excuse that there's none righteous, no, not one. A lot of men, they run to that scripture. When you tell them about a life free from sin, they tell you, oh, no, there's none righteous, no, not one. All have come short of the glory of God. But men and brethren, under the law, all have come short of God's glory. But now in this new and living way, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is going to give men power. He's giving men power in these last days that they shouldn't be in sin anymore. That they should live holy in their flesh. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was a man. He felt the things that we feel each and every day. Just like we are. He was a man tempted as we are but men and brethren the scripture tells me yet without sin and as many as believed on him he said he's going to give them that same power to live holy in their flesh also they want a lot of men in these last days they want to limit the power of God when they're in some type of adversity when they're in some type of trial they can't pay their bills I know God can save me when they can't, when they're in hard financial times, I know God can make a way. But men and brethren, that sin in your life, the Lord can take that out of your life also. Because a lot of men, they're looking for a cure. Thank you, Jesus. They're looking for a cure for the disease cancer. Or they're looking for a cure for Ebola. They're looking for the cure for every disease that they attract. But there's a worse disease in men's flesh today that's killing men. And it's sin in their flesh. And by the grace of God, faith in Jesus Christ is the cure. There's only one way to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There's only one way to heaven. You got to come through this straight and narrow way. The scripture tells me if any man want to come after Christ, let him first deny himself and take up his cross daily in order to follow Christ. You can't try to come your own way. Try to come a back road. A lot of men, they like to serve God at their own leisure or at their own convenience. They pick a church. They shop for churches like some groceries. They go to church and they pick out this one because it's more convenient for them. They know this church allows them to be in sin. So they pick that church. But men and brethren, the scripture tells me straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. And today, if you can have ears to hear, men and brethren, don't harden your heart today. A lot of people don't really understand what it means to be a Christian. They say with their mouth they know God, but in their works, they're denying him. But men and brethren, today we're telling you, a Christian is holy. Just like Christ is holy, a Christian is holy also. A Christian cannot commit adultery. A Christian cannot commit fornication. A Christian cannot curse with his mouth. If you truly a Christian, if you truly know God, you cannot commit sin. Amen. The scripture tells me whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. A true Christian, God's seed is in him. It won't let him sin by the grace of God, men and brother. So a lot of people, they're deceived into thinking as long as they go to church, they can title themselves as Christians. But men and brethren are here. 2 Timothy chapter 2, telling me that let everyone that name the name of Christ, let him first depart from iniquity. Let him first come out of sin. Don't title yourself as a Christian, men and brethren, today. 
If you still looking and lusting with your eyes, if you looking at every woman that walk by, you gotta undress them with your eyes and in your conscience. Don't tire yourself as a Christian. If you still in all kind of adultery, you sleeping and cheating on your wife, don't try to tire yourself as a Christian. The scripture tells me, God forbid, is Christ therefore the minister of sin, men and brethren? God forbid. You saying you're a Christian, but then you're in all kind of iniquity. You saying Christ is in sin also, men and brethren, God forbid. But if you say you're a Christian, if you say you know God, the scripture tells me you have to be living holy also. You have to be living righteous also. Because whether you're young or whether you're old, the Lord is going to judge you for what you've done in your body. Amen. When that breath leaves your body and it's time for you to meet your maker, the Lord is going to judge you for what you've done in your body, men and brethren. If you wasn't living holy, if you wasn't living righteous, and you wasn't living godly in your flesh, the Lord, he cannot receive you. The Lord is going to say, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. But men and brethren, we're telling you, and we're out here to tell you about this new and living way. You don't have to live that life of sin anymore. You don't have to live that life of lust anymore. You don't have to live that life full of cursing and swearing anymore. You can live holy. You can live righteous. Men and brother, you can live godly in this present world. A lot of men, they say after we die, that's when we're going to become perfect. But our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said, in this present world, I will give you that power. This grace is appeared unto all men. And it's going to teach you how to deny lust of the eyes. It's going to teach you how to be faithful to your one wife. It's going to teach young men that they don't have to be sleeping around. They don't have to be in fornication, men and brother. This grace is going to teach you and keep you from sin. Because the scripture tells me in 1 John chapter 1, that whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. And because God's seed is in him and it won't let him sin, men and brethren. And that's why the Son of God was manifest. He was manifest to destroy the works of the devil today. And that's what we're out here preaching and proclaiming unto you today, men and brethren. The life of God may manifest in flesh and blood. That now, by the grace of God, you don't have to fall short of the God, the God's glory anymore. You don't have to say the good that I would. I do not, but the evil is what I do. You don't have to have that testimony anymore, men and brother. Towards the end of Romans chapter 7, Paul said, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. By the grace of God, the Lord has made us free from all sin. And if you truly have faith and believe in God, you too can be made free from all sin. Because sin has men bound in these last days. Bound, they, sin got men subject in these last days. They're subject to lusting. They're subject to committing fornication. They're subject to committing adultery. Sin got men bound in these last days. But by the grace of God, faith in Jesus Christ can make you free. I hear Galatians chapter 5 telling us, let us therefore stand in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. And let us not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Don't say you're a Christian. One day you're holy, but then the next day you're going back into sin, men and brethren. A Christian don't backslide. He don't be holy one day, then the next day he's in sin. He don't get baptized one day, and then the next day he's continuing in sin. Men and brethren, a Christian lives holy in his flesh today. And we are here to tell you about this new and living way, men and brethren. It's not being preached in these congregations because they're only looking for your money. They're only looking for your tithes. They only want you to fill up their pockets. So they're going to tell you something convenient for you. They're going to tell you some great smoothing words. But men and brethren, we're out here to preach unto you the truth. And the scripture tells me you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. Amen. So many false churches that have been established by men in these last days. And they are preaching this false doctrine that no man can live without sin. They're saying all you got to do is say the sinners pray. 
and acknowledge that you are a sinner. I was saying Christ Jesus came 2,000 years ago or more. And he said every man should repent and be baptized for the remission of sins. But the sinner's prayer is saying, Lord Jesus, I am acknowledging that I'm a sinner. We're saying the Lord know you're a sinner. He knew that a long time ago. And that's why he came and said, repent every one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. But the false prophets are still telling the people, just say the sinner's prayer. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. Well, if you're sorry, why are you in the sin? We're saying Christ didn't come and die to give you power to come and sin. Yeah. The Lord said he paid a penalty. He paid a price for sin. The wages of sin is death. Yeah. So if the Lord paid a price for you, why are you still in sin? Let me break it down for you. In simple terms. If you have a credit card and you owe a thousand dollars on that credit card and you can't afford to make that payment and a good friend came and said, I'll pay that thousand dollars for you. If that friend paid a thousand dollars for you, do you still owe that credit card company? You are free from that death. So we said, friends, there is only one true doctrine. And this is what you're hearing here today. We're saying have faith in Jesus Christ. I heard the previous minister saying it is possible to live without sin. But you see, Satan is using these false prophets in these false churches to keep the world in sin. And I'm saying, if you are a member of one of these churches, you know you're still abiding in sin. Because God says every man knows his own heart. You know what kind of sin you are in. If you're in fornication, you know it. So let's tell you what fornication is. Fornication is having any kind of sexual contact with someone that's not your legitimate marriage spouse. Any kind of sex out of marriage is called fornication. Adultery is when a man leaving his own wife and having sexual relation with someone else or someone else's spouse. It's called adultery. So if you are in adultery today, you know it. But we're saying, friends, in the house of God, in the church of the living God, there is no fornication. God does not condone fornication. And we don't. We're saying, friends, think about this. God is saying, there is only one Lord. He has one faith and one spirit, meaning one baptism. So ask yourself this question. Why are there so many different faiths in the world today? And we can name a few for you right quickly. The Catholic, they have their own faith. The Baptists have their own faith. The Methodists have their own faith. The Jehovah's Witness have their own faith. I was saying their own faith because they say no man can live without sin. They're denying the very purpose for Christ coming into the world. 
will say to their friends, it is possible to live without sin. It is possible to love your neighbors as you love yourself. It is possible to turn your eyes from adultery and from fornication. Now you have this thing in the world today. They're saying two men now can be married and have a sexual relationship. But God is saying homosexuality is an abomination. So who is right? Is God wrong? God does not condone sin. Adam commit one sin in the garden. One sin. And God could not have communication with him anymore. Adam could not be in God's presence once he commit one sin. So how is God accepting everybody in sin today? We're saying if that's the case, God would have to apologize to Adam. But the scripture said God is no respecter of persons. The scripture says, let God be true and every man a liar. We're saying today, it is possible to live a holy and sanctified life without sin, friends. Hear the word of God says in Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. It says, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? You see, and that's the problem with these false churches. With these false prophets that preaching this life unto you, like the Catholic Church. Everyone knows the Catholic priest molests little children. But yet there are millions of Catholics in the world. So we're saying you have been deceived. Satan is using the Pope to deceive the world today. Everybody have a high respect and a high regard for the Pope. But he has a bunch of priests that molesting your little boys. And you're afraid, you're afraid to speak out against it. Because you yourself are in sin. But we're saying we are not in sin any longer, friends. And that's why we can stand here and proclaim God's righteousness. That's why we can stand here boldly and tell you the Baptist church is in sin. The Catholic Church is in sin. The Methodist Church is in sin. The Jehovah's Witness Church is in sin. And I can go on and on and on. Because the scripture is telling me there is only one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. There is only one church that has been established by Jesus Christ. You see, Christ only has one body on the earth. The scripture tells me God created a body on the earth. A body has not prepared me to do that will of God. He take it away the first that he may establish the second. What's well, that, friends? There is no sin in the body of Jesus Christ. See, a lot of people like to call themselves my Christians. Arm, my arms are dying. But I heard one of the ministers saying, a Christian is one who lives like Christ. That's what Christianity means, to be like Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ is not a sinner. He never sinned, friends. He lived on the earth for 33 and a half years and he never sinned. That was his example to the world that a man of flesh and blood can live holy and sanctified. 
But the, all these false churches are denying that. They try to make God a liar. We're saying it is possible to live without sin, friends. You don't have to hate your neighbors anymore. You don't have to commit adultery with your neighbor's spouse anymore. You don't have to be in fornication. Sex out of marriage, boyfriends and girlfriends. It doesn't have to be like that, friends. That's the purpose for Christ coming. To destroy the works of the devil. That sin, that's in man's flesh today. We're saying we are the church of the living God, friends. And you'll never hear this type of preaching in any other church. Because God didn't send them. God didn't come now and establish a Catholic church. That have been established by men. And for one purpose only. For your money. God didn't establish a Baptist church. If he had. They would be written in this Bible. But I've never seen a Catholic church mentioned in the Bible. I've never seen a Baptist church mentioned in the Bible. I've never seen a Methodist church mentioned in the Bible. Why? The only church that has been mentioned in the Bible is the church of the living God. The pillar and ground of the truth. You can search the scriptures, friends, from Genesis to Revelation. And the only church you will see is the church of the living God. The body of Jesus Christ. At this time, we give space to another minister to bring forth this unadulterated gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As we listen today, men and brethren, to these ministers, Declaring unto you the path that leadeth to eternal life. And we say today, if you take heed in what you're hearing, you can find eternal life. This eternal life has came by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Who put some labor and some work in his righteousness. The scripture says he came down from heaven. From his holy throne today, men and brethren. Dwell upon the earth. Where sin and sinners was deep in sin and death. He labored. He preached, but the world, they hated him. They put our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to death upon the cross of Calvary. Now a lot of people know these stories. They heard that the Lord had died. But we don't want it to be a bedtime story for you today. You see, it's not a fable. It's not something that, you know, you, you read to your kids before they go to bed. What we're declaring to you today is a gospel that was preached over 2,000 years ago and is preaching even today that can save lives. Man. This gospel today is beyond the world. A lot of false prophets, they go out, they feed the poor, they give, you know, around this Christmas time, as it were, gifts, you know, and uh, this fake Santa Claus, showing that he is so merciful, he can give gifts to kids and spread joy into the world. Well, we're preaching an everlasting joy. We're not preaching a joy only for a season. We say to you today, men and brethren, 
this gospel that we're preaching to you today that can give you eternal life. We see in the ministers laboring today that God, he hates sin. We ain't going to be your friends today, men and brethren, in the sound of our voice. We're not going to be like the Catholic Church that ain't going to preach the truth to his congregation. Matter of fact, they don't know the truth. We're not going to be like the Baptists who can't preach the truth unto their members because they don't know the truth. They don't have the truth. You see, we're going to be your true friends today. We're not going to hide. We're not going to be ashamed or afraid to declare to you God's righteousness. God's righteousness is against sin. It's against the Catholic Church. And as we heard the minister saying, we'll molest you little boys. We're against the Baptist faith that will commit adultery and fornication in their church and saying, God is going to forgive you. We're against the seven days Adventist religion. They could do all the sin all during the week and come this Sabbath, they'll be holy. We're declaring a sacrifice that is holy unto God without sin. We're hearing the minister say today, if your heart is being hardened by you hearing this unadulterated gospel, is God hardening your heart today? Is God not giving you that heart to humble yourselves before his righteous kingdom? What is man looking for in these last days? Let there be peace on earth. We're looking for some kind of hope, some resolution. But we say not in this world, men and brethren. After Adam sinned against God, all men that was born from a woman has born with sin in their flesh. And we say in this gospel, in Christ's work, is to destroy sin and the devil. God's righteousness is pulling down the strongholds of the false prophets. A lot of people have heard about heaven and hell. But do they believe it? Well, yeah, I heard there is a heaven and there is a hell. But what kind of God will put somebody in hell? We're serving a righteous God today, men and brethren. And if you love that homosexuality more than you love God's righteousness, you deserve to go to hell. If you love that fornication so bad, tipping in on your neighbor's wife or your neighbor's husband, you deserve to be cast in hell in a lake of fire. If you love that fornication and that adultery so much that you don't want to give it up, we say God is righteous and just to put judgment on the world. So for those of you who seeking for peace on earth, as it were, this false hope, this false peace, you know, we believe that if we have the right president, if we have the right government in place, good police officers, yes, then we can have peace on earth. Now, men and brethren, what we labor into you today Ain't no peace on this earth as long as sin is abiding in man's flesh. Our message is very simple today. Give me a plate of food because I'm hungry. Minister, what you talking about, Jesus? I need a job. I want to pay my bills. You know, let's deal with reality. You know, <laughs> I'm naked. I need to be clothed. I need a roof over my head. Don't preach Jesus. What? 
God has done for me. Wow. We say the world is proud, men and brethren. They don't want to retain God in their knowledge. That's why God is giving them over to a reprobate mind, the scripture says. That a man could lust or want to have sex with another man. An abomination in God's sight. And he will destroy such a one. A woman could think that she could have pleasure with another woman. Oh, those adulterers, they can't get enough. You know, it don't matter how many women they got, the flesh can't be satisfied. They try to fill up all the lust of the eyes. Oh, how many women and men they think that it could get, and still, it will always continue in that sin. We talking about a peace, men and brethren, that God had suffered and died for today. Our everlasting peace. Not a seasonal peace. You know, we have a president and he's supporting gay marriage. As long as we have murderers, People who hate in their neighbor, covetousness, molestation, you know, as we said, those Catholic priests. And they can't even preach the truth to their priests, the Pope we're speaking about. But we're not going to be like that to you today. We're going to be your true friends. Whether you hear or forbear. Whether you love what we say or you hate what we say. We're saying if you want to be God's friend, you're going to have to deny. In other words, be a soldier of God who labor to fight against the lust of the flesh. The scripture says that the spirit, spirit of God, it lusted against the flesh and the flesh against the spirit. And these are contrary one to the other. But if you're trying to do good and you find that you can't do good, sin is still there. And what we're laboring to show you today, that God has the answer. This is why he died, men and brethren. But as long as, you know, a woman, she want to dress like a whore, look like a whore, and when we preach against that whoredom spirit, you know, don't you try to judge me by what I'm wearing? Judge me by my heart, they will try to say. A man trying to dress like a woman, and you don't want me to say that's an abomination? What kind of heart you got? Some people try to change their sex. I'm a man, but I want to be a woman. I'm a woman. I want to be a man. Confusion. You see, and for all of that abomination, God is going to bring swift destruction on the earth. We're going to be your friends today, men and brethren, and tell you if you're abiding in sin, God is not happy with you. Man. That's why you destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, a nation of homosexuals. A nation of lesbians, even today, as we see, even the earth, they vomit, the earth vomit out all this abomination that is going on in the world today. Look at Los Angeles. All kind of disasters, even the earth cannot take all this weight of sin that's in it. No. Men and brethren, we are voice of God today. We are a voice of reasoning and saying we're going to be your friends. Even though you're hardening in your heart today. We're not preaching to any and everybody. We always tell you that we're preaching to the lost sheep of God. Someone who can be sorrowful 
for all the lust and the fornication and the murder and the evil that taken place in these last days. Somebody who want to turn from sin, who want to turn from that wicked, abominable life and want to come to Christ today. Hell and the lake of fire is not a bedtime story. It's not a fable. God's going to destroy this earth with fire, with brimstone, men and brethren. And we are voice of God saying you better take heed today. You better come and have fellowship with God, with His Son, Jesus Christ, who suffered, who died to bring forth this righteousness. You see, we will not be like the false Christians, like the Seven Days Adventist preachers, like the Baptist preachers, who will not preach the truth to the people. What we're preaching today, we don't know if you're hearing us, but if you're hearing us, God hates sin. And he is going to destroy the sinner in sin. Amen. You see, this is what the world don't understand. What kind of God are you preaching? God that's going to take, you know, people and cast them in a lake of fire? I don't believe God will do that. But we say to you today, men and brethren, we serve in a righteous God. A holy God. And we say if he put you in hell. In a lake of fire. He is righteous. To do such a thing. But if you will be humble. And obedient. We heard a scripture says. Then you can enjoy the good of the land. What good of the land are we speaking about? Look around you. In the world that you live in today, you want to go after your careers, and you're looking for a better job. You want your nice house, and I want a new car. These things of the world to make you comfortable. We don't have a problem with a new car or a new house. The problem God have with this world is sin. Because of sin, the scripture says that God was manifested in flesh and blood. That he might destroy the works of the devil. Adulterous works. Fornication works. Lustful works. All these pedophilia works. Homosexual works. Adulterous. Hatred. Pride. Men and brethren, God put a conscience in you today. In all men and women that is born in the earth. You have a conscience in you. You know what is right from wrong. But we're saying if God is calling you today, you're going to have, you're going to have ears to hear. You're going to happen to what these brethren are saying. So before we call forth another minister, to declare this form of righteousness. We say, take heed to these ministers today. Because you won't have a second chance when you die. A lot of people are going to be wailing and gnashing of teeth, the scripture teaches us. They're going to be saying, Lord, have mercy on us. But the scripture says, too late shall be the cry of many, of many men and brethren. So this is just like a warning. This is just God's righteousness is calling his lost sheep today. And anybody who is seeking for God's righteousness, this is the way. You might say, I'm a Christian. I know God. But are you abiding in sin today? Are you still preaching sinner saved by grace doctrine? We don't believe.
believe in that sinner saved by grace doctrine. We think God can give you power to live free from sin today. That is also not a fable. That is also not a story. If God wants us to live holy, and if he's going to destroy sin in hell and the lake of fire, then he must have a solution. He is a righteous God. He must have a way to eternal life. And this way is through his Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When you hear his preachers preaching on the street corners, saying God hates sin, you better believe it. And you better come and inquire of what thus said the Lord. Because these false denominations, these false prophets had diluted the gospel, watered down the doctrine. Are we going to preach the truth unto you today? We're going to be your friend today. If you can have ears to hear. Amen. Amen, men and brethren. Hear the word of the Lord today. We are church of the living God. Out here in your community to preach the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We're not out here, men and brethren, to collect any type of money. But the Lord told us to go out into the world to preach to every man, woman, and child, yeah, commanding them to repent yeah, of their sin. Okay. Or... We don't care how much money you make. Unlike the false prophet, we're not trying to collect 10%. Huh? We're out here today. We're out here for the saving of the soul. We're out here to show you what a true church of God is today by the grace of God. Huh? See, some say they go to church and they think the church is the building, the brick, the chairs, the pews, the pulpit. But we're saying today that the church of God is supposed to be the body of Christ. That means that's the members of his body. See, people say, I go to church. But when you go to their church, it's full of sin, men and brethren. You got homosexuals, lesbians, fornicators, adulterers, liars, thieves, drug users. They all in church, and they say they're worshiping God. But the scripture says that God, there is no darkness in God. So it's saying... These can't be the members of God's body because there's no sin in God. We like to take you to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. The scripture says in verse 33, For God is not the author of confusion. And that's what we're saying today, men and brethren. A lot of these churches today is a bunch of confusion. A lot of these churches, it's just like going to a, 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 a strip club sometime. Women come to dress and uh, entice men in church. We're saying that's not the body of Christ. Men go to church to pick up women. That's what they do in clubs. That's not the church of God. The pastor is sleeping with every sister in the church. That's not the body of Christ today, men and brethren. We're saying that God is not the author of confusion. See, the problem is you don't even know how to get a true church of God. But by the grace of God through the scriptures, we're going to show you. Without a true apostle, you don't even have a church. Some of these churches are founded by men. Men, they go to these divinity schools. They go and get a degree. They go and pick up a Bible. And they start a church. Well, that's not how you start a church. See, God got to call a man. And he got to reveal himself to a man. 
and those are his holy apostles and prophets. But the world, they say there's no more apostles in the world today. But we're saying today, if without an apostle, you don't have a church. Some of these churches have women preachers, women bishops, women ministers. We're going to keep reading. The scripture says God is not the author of confusion, but of peace in all the churches of the saints. Let your women keep silent. The Lord don't want women to speak in the church. So if you have a church that the woman is over it, that's not a church of God. See, the world, they don't like to hear that. But that's the word of God through the King James Version of the Bible. I heard the minister saying, we're not going to sugarcoat the word of God today. But as friends, we're going to warn you today. Sometime the truth, it hurt. But we're going to tell you the truth today. We're saying today, if you're going to a church that allows women to get up and speak, that's not the true church of God. The Lord said, let those women keep silent. See, the Lord said, I didn't send them, but they ran. See, all you need is to pay the tuition to a divinity. And you can get your theology degree. Don't matter if you're a man or woman. But see, a theology degree don't mean that's the church of God. God is not the author of confusion, men and brethren. He said, don't let them women speak in the church. For it's not permitted unto them to speak. But they are commanded to be under obedience. That's another thing that's not being taught in the, these churches. They believe in a 50-50 relationship. A man has 50% and a woman has her 50%. But a true church of God is going to tell their women, you need to be subject to your husband. See, God is not the author of confusion, men and brethren, but he's going to have peace in his church. So we're saying today, I want you to examine the church you're going today and look around. If you start seeing sisters that's pregnant and they don't have no husbands, that means they're in fornication. There is no fornication in God's body. God is not the author of of fornication I want you to look around in your church if you see that men put away their wives and marry again that's adultery God is not the author of adultery so we're saying today if you serve members in your church that's still in sin that can't be the body of Christ understand that a church is not the building men and brethren when you say you go to worship Christ, the Lord wants you to worship Him in spirit and in truth. God is not the author of confusion today. We're saying today that's the purpose that Christ was manifest, thank you Jesus, in the flesh today. That He might destroy the works of the devil. That He might destroy sin today. We're saying today, if God has destroyed sin in your life, if you've been baptized and you put that old man to death, then why, oh why are you still in sin today? You haven't truly been baptized. And that's why we're commanding men, you must be, you must repent. Thank you, Jesus. The scripture says in Jeremiah chapter 7, you trust in lying words. See, that's the problem with the false prophet. They're lying to you. Saying that you can say the temple of the Lord. The temple of the Lord are these. But still being your sin. That's a lie. The false prophet preach. All come short of the glory of God. You know, we all got to backslide sometimes. The false prophet in the world preached that all got a sin. But we're saying today, by the grace of God, you're looking at men today that have been liberated from sin today. 
men that don't commit sin by the grace of God. Living a life free from sin. That's what a true Christian going to tell you. By the grace of God. I heard one minister saying, with God pay your sins, you shouldn't be racking up sins anymore. You should be free indeed. We're saying a true church of God, that's the body of Christ. It's going to be sin free. God is not the author of confusion today. We're saying today, men and brethren, we want you to judge your church today. If you see your pastor is not doing right, he's mixed up in scandals. We're saying today, leave that church. Come and have fellowship with us. Because truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. We're saying today, if you find yourself in false religion, you can't be saved in false religion. The scripture says if the blind lead the blind, they're both going to fall in a ditch today. Some say, well, I got Jesus as my personal savior. I got a Bible in my car and I read my scriptures and I pray every day. But we're saying today you can't be saved alone. We're saying today you got to find the true body of Christ. you got to have fellowship with the true body of Christ. We're saying today just like a tree, if you cut off one of its branches, that branch that's alone is going to die. We're saying today you can't be saved on your own, but you have to find the true vine of Christ. You have to find the true church of God that been established by a true apostle that tells you to come out of your sins. They're going to tell you that by the grace of God, you can turn from your sins today. When you find the true church of God, that's what you want to go and grab on, men and brethren. When you find the true church of God, when he sent his ministers preaching on the corner today, that's when you want to come over and ask about this grace. We're saying today, when you find this true church of God that God established and not man, when you're saying today, when you find this true church of God that can set one free from sin, that's when you sell all that you have, you give it to the poor, and you buy that good purchase, that good field today. We're saying today, men and brother, we want you to examine your life. If you was a sinner before you knew God, and now you're saying you know God, and you're still a sinner, then what did God do for you? I want you to really think about that. If you was a sinner before you knew God, and now you're saying God saved you, He washed you, He cleaned you, He sanctified you, but you're still in sin, then what did God do for you? We're saying today, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. We're saying it is possible to live a life free from sin. You just got to have some faith. See, that's the problem. It's easy to give in to sin. Men love to fall into temptation. They love to just give in to the lust of their flesh. But the Lord said, when I come back, shall I find faith? And that's the faith that he's looking for. You having faith to put your flesh to death today. Having faith to deny yourself today. And we're saying the only way you can do that is a man got to declare to you. We're saying today that this is church of the living God that was established by a true apostle. That these ministers today can show you by their lives. How to live a life free from sin. We're saying those that have a desire for righteousness, we invite you to come over. If righteousness pique your interest, we're saying come and learn of me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, my brethren. We're here today in your neighborhood to preach on you the true church of God. As the previous minister was saying, we're not like the false churches. 
We're not here for any gain of flesh, any money, but we're here for the saving of your soul. To preach unto you that Jesus Christ, he died on the cross for our sins, that we don't continue in sin. And he rose again on the third day. Amen, man, brother. Some out there believe that there is more than one God, that there is two, or that Jehovah, he the one that sent Jesus Christ. But we're saying Jesus Christ, he is God. And we're going to show you that here in the scripture. In St. John chapter 1. Amen, the brother, and it says the word, the word of God. In the beginning was the word of God. And the word was with God. And the word was God. We're saying that word, it'll give you power to come out of sin. It'll give you power to love your one wife, or love your one husband. Scripture says here, verses 11. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them he gave, he gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Better brother, we're out here preaching the true word of God, but you have to have ears to hear what the spirit says in church. Better brother, and if you truly have ears to hear what we're saying, come, ask questions, come, fellowship with us, be born again. We're out here preaching to all men that they may repent. Scripture says, which was born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. The word was made flesh. In the previous verse it says, the word was with God and the word was, was God. Now it says the word was made flesh. Who is that flesh? That's Jesus Christ. And it dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. And the glory has of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. But brother, some out there think that it's their own body. They can do what they want. They don't have to do this. They don't have to obey God. But we're saying that's not the case. They're saying there's somebody working in a vessel. Either it's God or it's the devil. Huh? But we're out here preaching unto you that you may repent of your sins. Scripture says here in Romans chapter 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that God grace may abound? God forbid. As previous minister was saying, if God came and died for you, that you may not continue in sin and you still in sin, what did he do for you? We're saying you got to come out of that sin and be born again. Know you not that many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. And like as Christ raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we all should, should walk in the newness of life. We're saying come out from the world. We're saying put down the liquor bottle, put down the cigarette. I'm sure some of you out there when you're smoking, you're wondering why you're smoking. You throw the cigarette away, but 10 minutes later, you're back in there smoking. We're saying that's bondage. But this word to give you power, men and brethren, to put that away. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. That's why we're out here in this world today to preach unto you the true church of God. As the minister was saying, you have to hear from an apostle, a true man of God, to declare this word unto you. You can't know it on your own, or Jesus Christ, he's my personal savior. We're saying that's not the case. Likewise, reckon all, ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal bodies, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. You can't be going to the church just just to pay the pastor off so he could say that, yeah, you bought your way into heaven. You, you're fine. Just give me all of your money. There's no problem. We're saying that's a lie. They're just wolves in sheep clothing. They just want your money or your women. We're saying you should come to the true church of God. To be under a true man of God that he may teach you the ways of Christ. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it and the lust thereof. Jesus Christ, my brother, he is God. And he did die on the cross for us to save us from our sins. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. When the brother, there's going to be something working in your body. It's not just you there by yourself. Either it's going to be God or there's going to be sin. 
For sin shall have no dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Like we were saying earlier, you're not going to be in bondage under sin, bondage under the lust, bondage under fornication, smoking and drinking. We're saying you can come out from that bondage if you just come and ask questions. These brothers here, they'll show you. They'll tell you by their works, by what they're doing in their body, they'll tell you that it's possible to live a life free of sin. Huh? What then? Shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. The scripture says that if you say that you're a sinner saved by grace, that's not possible. What then? Know you not that to whom you yield yourself servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom you obey, whether sin unto death or obedience unto righteousness? But God be think that you were the servants of sin, but you have obeyed from the heart. We're saying if you could truly hear what we're saying, come out and come unto the true church of God. Amen. Amen, men and brethren. We're church of the living God. And we're here today on your street corner, in your neighborhood, preaching this unadulterated word of God as it is written in the King James Version of the Bible. And as our previous minister was speaking, he was saying our purpose out here today is not because we're out here gleaning, trying to raise funds, but well, our purpose today, men and brethren, is we're looking for those that truly desire to be saved. You know, all of us have that same testimony, if you have been listening, that we truly believe in a life free from all sin, men and brethren. And we're saying, men and brethren, that, that's the same testimony that Christ came and brought into this world. The scripture speaks about how he left us an example that we shall follow in his footsteps, men and brethren. And if you look at the life of Christ, the only thing Christ manifested while he was in this world was righteousness, men and brethren. How to love his neighbor, men and brethren. How to deny all fleshly lust, men and brethren. We're saying today, men and brethren, the problem that we have in this world today is that so much false religion, they preach so many different religions and they try to say that it still leads back to God. We're saying don't be deceived, men and brethren. There is only one faith, one truth, and one baptism, men and brethren. I hear the scripture saying that they all have a form of godliness, men and brethren. A form of godliness. But they deny the power thereof. We're saying today, men and brethren, religion these days, men and brethren, false religion, they all are offshoots from the law. And we know, men and brethren, that under the law, no one can be saved. That's where everybody, they like to run, men and brethren, to Romans. And read that scripture about, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But we're saying, men and brethren, that was the purpose of Christ coming into the flesh. We are the, our minister saying today. That Christ, he came into flesh and blood to destroy the work of the devil. To destroy sin in men's flesh. But what's said today, the problem, men and brethren, is a lack of faith. Men and brethren, they all have this testimony. What? All have sinned to come short of the glory of God. But they don't like to read further down. That's the problem with the flesh today. They like to pick and choose what parts of the doctrine they want to believe. But the scripture talks about how Jesus, he suffered, he died, and he shed his blood for the sins of the world. And men and brethren, he rose again for our justification. 
So, men and brother, we're saying today that there's no longer any excuse for you to continue in sin. Why? Because that same grace, that same power that Christ demonstrated when he walked on this earth, we're saying that same grace and power is here today. We're living testimonies, men and brethren, of this doctrine, this righteousness, men and brethren. We're not like the false prophet who say, do as we say and not what we do. You know the scripture brings about in Romans chapter 2 about the false prophet. How they like to, as it were, say, keep the law, keep the law. Don't commit adultery. But you ask them, are you committing adultery? We're saying, men and brethren, we don't preach that. We're preaching, men and brethren, a life free from sin. And that life free of sin, men and brethren, a true Christian, as we heard the minister preaching this, he said, men and brethren, that the true Christian doesn't backslide into sin. We're saying, men and brethren, the church that you call yourself they are belonging to, do they preach the true form of God's righteousness, men and brethren? We're not here preaching our own righteousness, men and brethren. But we're preaching God's righteousness today. What's saying today is, is that righteousness, you labor in the work that righteousness, men and brethren, that exceeds the righteousness of the Pharisees. You see the problem, what we're trying to say, men and brethren. A lot of people, they like to say, I do this minister, I pay my tithes. I don't kill my neighbor. I don't smoke. I don't do this form of sin. I don't do that form of sin. But we're saying today, men and brethren, if you're not keeping all the commandments of God, you're still in sin. One scripture talks about how the flesh, they like to omit the weightier matters of the law. You know, they like to fulfill some part of the law. But Satan always come back and as it were, hit them below the belt and they have to succumb to sin. We're saying, men and brethren, Christ gave us power, men and brethren, to overcome sin, men and brethren. You see, under the old covenant, under the law, men could say they had an excuse. And God saw that, men and brethren. If you read in the book of Isaiah, in the book of the Old Testament, men and brethren, the Lord just looking at the state of men and how Satan is just beating the flesh. But we're saying Christ saw that and he saw how we needed his help. We needed his strength. So he came in and brethren and he did that work. The Lord, men and brethren, God himself, can you imagine that, men and brethren? You, God, and you coming in the form of a man. One minister was saying how he was tempted. He went through everything that we went through, men and brethren, that we go through from day to day. But Christ, men and brethren, he didn't give up, men and brethren. He didn't yield to sin. But he overcame. And one scripture te speaks about in Titus chapter 2. That this same grace it is appeared unto all men. Teaching us men and brethren. How to deny ungodly lust men and brethren. And how we men and brethren today. We can live soberly righteous in this present world. But we're saying. A lot of people, they can't believe that, men and brethren. That unbelief is just abiding in their heart. Let me ask you something. Do you believe that God can do all things? Do you believe that God has power to do anything that He desires? We're saying if you believe in God, men and brethren, believe 
that God has power to take sin out of your life also. We're, scripts, we're saying today, men and brethren, that with faith, all things are possible. We're saying today, even as another minister, he was bringing out in St. John chapter 1, talking about to those who believe. The scripture says, to those gave he power to become the sons of God. But what we're saying today, men and brethren, it's easy just to talk or to say that you believe in God. But we're saying today, you can't know God while you're in sin. If you read in St. John chapter 4, there was a woman. She came before the Lord and she was talking with the Lord. And the Lord, he was preaching this righteousness. And he was preaching and saying, excuse me, men and brethren. He was preaching and he was saying that he had those living waters, men and brethren. That if you can drink of it, men and brethren, you shall never die. You will never thirst again, men and brethren. This is not a carnal thing the Lord was talking about. We're talking about, men and brethren, the Lord quenching that thirst, men and brethren. Righteousness, men and brother, thirsting after righteousness. He can give you that grace, men and brother. But as you continue to read on, he told the woman to go call her husband. And she had some as an understanding, or she perceived who she was talking with. She noticed that it was an ordinary man, so she went ahead and spoke the truth and said, I don't even have a husband. And the Lord said, That's right. You have five. What's that, men and brethren? That's adultery. So to those religions that preach that you can divorce your spouse and get married again, we're saying, did the scripture tell you that? Or did your own carnal mind come up with that doctrine? We're saying, Christ, he doesn't accept any form of sin. But to come to God, we're saying, men and brother, you got to come through that door. You know, you got to humble yourself, men and brother. You have to do some denying of yourself, men and brother. Some denying of that lust in the flesh. Demonstrating some faith to God. That's what the Lord is looking for, men and brother. The only sacrifice that you can give to God, men and brother. Is your body, men and brother. The Lord said that He wants you to offer up your body as a holy and living sacrifice, men and brother. You know, they preach, pay your tithes. You know, uh, on the Sabbath day, on the seventh day of Venice, you just take a day out of the week and rest. But we're saying today, no, God isn't receiving no carnal sacrifices of the flesh. What God wants from you, men and brethren, is a demonstration of faith. And one scripture speaks about how if you have a faith, even as a grain of a mustard seed, that you can move mountains, men and brethren, by the grace of God. And what is that mountain, men and brethren? You know, a lot of people, they look at the word of God with a carnal understanding. We're talking about that mountain of sin that's standing before you. We're talking about how Satan, he's just ruling in your flesh and you don't even have control over your own body. A lot of people, they under the delusion that, you know, they lead about their own life. But in Romans chapter 6, it brings about how you're only going to be an instrument of righteousness or instrument of unrighteousness, men and brother. And sin, men and brother, is unrighteousness. So if you sinning in your flesh, men and brother, who do you think you serve? Who do you think is pulling your strings? You know, you are bondage to liquor. You are bondage to lust. You can't be satisfied with your own spouse. You got, as it were, vile affections. You can't, as it were, 
You, by the way, leave it or not, natural affection for a woman, you lusting after men. Or you're a woman and you lusting after other women. Children being disobedient to parents, men and brethren. We're saying, men and brethren, that Christ is the only way to salvation, men and brethren. And this salvation, men and brethren, it's not something that you're just going to, as it were, receive for not doing anything, men and brethren. A lot of people, they preach that when you die, you're just going to be saved. But we're saying, men and brethren, just some common sense. If there's a heaven and you believe that there's heaven, the minister before us was saying that there's a hell also. We're saying if everybody is going to go to heaven, what is the purpose for hell? Let me give you a little bit of understanding, men and brethren. Hell was created for Satan and his angels. But if you read the book of Luke, men and brethren, the Lord, he said that he prepared hell and the lake of fire also for those who love sin, men and brethren. For those who love the devil. For those who want to follow after him. We're saying, men and brethren, think about it. Now the scripture says that the wages of sin is death. We're saying as long as you sin it in your flesh, men and brethren, there's a penalty, penalty for that, men and brethren. One scripture brings about an ecclesiastics how because judgment is not executed expediently, quickly, men and brethren. It just makes the flesh more bold to sin. You know, because you sin it and a lightning bolt don't strike you down or a car don't run you over or you don't die the moment that you sin. Men, they have no fear of God. But we're saying today, men and brethren, even though you don't, <clears throat> even though you sin, you might think you're getting away with it. I hear the Lord saying that it's a counter for men once to die. And after that, it's the judgment. We're saying today, men and brother, as we're preaching today, as these ministers have been preaching today, we're here, men and brethren, to labor to open up your eyes. You know, snap our fingers, men and brother, trying to wake you up out of that illusion, that dream. We're saying, men and brother, there's no such thing as a sinner saved by grace. Christ, men and brother, he suffered such an agonizing death. He gave us this grace and his power. And we're saying, men and brother, don't. Take the grace of God in vain. The grace of God is not for you to continue in sin. The grace of God is power to keep you from sin, to take you out of sin, men and brother. You know, the world, they all, this is something, they, they don't truly understand what they're saying. We're saying, men and brother, that, and pay attention to what we're going to say, men and brother. We're saying, Christ didn't come to save you in your sin. Christ came and died to save you from sin, men and brethren. So there's no such thing, men and brethren, as a sinner saved by grace. But we're saying, we hope that as this preacher's been going forth, that you can, as it were, be attentive. If you truly have that desire to worship God, a true desire to come out of sin, we're saying today, Christ has that power. All Christ is looking for is a little demonstration of faith, men and brethren. But we're saying it's hard, men and brethren, for you to come out of sin, men and brethren. When that unbelief is abiding in you, men and brethren, say it as you bound, change, men and brethren. We're saying you're being held captive by your own flesh. Again, we're saying that Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation. If you have a desire, men and brethren, you don't want to sin no more. We're saying you have to come and have fellowship with the true church of God. With the true body of Christ, men and brethren. Because only the body of Christ, men and brethren, only having fellowship 
with this righteousness and being a partaker of this righteousness can cleanse away your sin, men and brother. This is the true doctrine of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Well, we're saying today, men and brother, do you have faith? To exercise some faith, men and brother, to truly follow after God. We're saying, as the word of God been going forth, we pray that you don't harden your heart, but you can receive something and humility. In Jesus' name, amen.